Well, this week we are we are patching the fence. Patching the fence? Well, and the fence doesn't need patching. The patches are the thing that need the, the patching. Oh, my. <laughs> But I just, I love the look of these old corrugated metal panels that were quite often used for patching a fence. Especially when there were kids sneaking through the boards. Yes, this looks like Dennis the Menace has been crawling yes. right underneath this he thing. He probably had been. And I, I just love this look. Oh, wow, look at that. And so uh, the goal was to patch the fence, even though the fence doesn't really need any patching. Uh, when you get out into some of these really mining areas, rural mining rural, areas, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. these metal panels are just all over the place. Oh, yeah, they're cheap and they're everywhere. And, and you can build your fence out of them or patch your fence or just mm -hmm. cobble something together. Oh, boy. So this is the look. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is the look that we're after for the patches on our fence. So the question is, how do we come up with these these panels to patch the fence with? Hmm. Now, we did that show, oh, geez, I don't know. It's been well over a year ago on making corrugated, rusty corrugated panels for roofing. Oh, right. And this is, this is from that show. And here's a link to that show. You definitely want to watch that. Uh, but we were trying to make rusty panels that are in pretty good shape right. to use for roofing on the coaling tower. This time we want to make corrugated panels that are, well, let's just say not in good shape. Right, the leftover stuff. <laughs> this is the stuff that we're building it out of, this, this craft foil that you can get off of Amazon. It's a uh, 36 gauge. It's sort of just like the regular kitchen foil, except it's very heavy. It's a 36 gauge. Right. Uh, and then we've got this off Amazon as well. It's a toothpaste tube squeezer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of an oversized one for doing paint tubes and stuff, but it puts corrugations in there. We also bought a great big huge one for corrugating paper, but this one does a much better job. It does. Uh, the only downside is you have to, it has a maximum width of four inches. Right. But that's okay. So you just cut your, your metal down to four inches wide and then some sort of manageable length. They'll be cut to uh, a narrower length as you go, but you want to keep the length fairly manageable as you run it through the squeezer. Right. Uh, you don't want to try running. I'm actually running too much through here in this video, and I learned my lesson. Just, just run only uh, maybe six inches, uh, five or six, seven inches through here at a time, and then you'll end up with uh, panels that look like this. That looks like brand new, though. Well, we got to work on that. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we're going to do is cut them down to their final size because then they're much more manageable. It's not at all manageable when it's long like this. And you end up with a huge stack of panels. This is what we would buy at the hardware store. <laughs> now, the day I decided to do this, uh, I waited until just before sunset on a freezing cold day. So I was in a huge hurry. <laughs> Oh, my. Now, you don't want to forget your safety equipment, right. uh, eye protection, uh, breathing protection, rubber gloves. This stuff is very caustic. This is uh, ferric chloride. Oh, dear. Uh, we got this on Amazon as well, and it has to be ground shipped and so on because it's, uh, it's very, very toxic. Yes. But this is what etches the, the aluminum panels. I also mixed up a batch of soda water. Oh. Just using baking soda. Uh-huh. Uh, because as soon as you put the panels in here, it immediately stops the reaction of the acid. And at the same time, it adds a certain color to it. Oh, really? That I like. So sometimes I'll go straight from the acid into water, sometimes straight from the acid into the soda, usually into the soda. Now this time I did, uh, I stood them up on end because I want them to be way more corroded for the roof panels, you just throw them in there. Right. But if you want one end all eaten away, then you just, this is how you eat away one end. <laughs> oh, gee, no wonder you wear gloves. Oh, man. Gosh. And then I did something that I, I, I advise against. I put a whole bunch of them in here, but uh, it was freezing cold, and right. I just wanted to get this done. Uh, this is much easier done on a nice, pleasant day and not just before sunset, so you don't have to rush. Uh, I would recommend doing them one at a time or at most maybe two or three at a time. Right. I'm putting all these in here at once and then that makes management 
difficult. Uh, yeah, without tipping over all because the dominoes. Yeah, and then once the reaction takes off, it's like, oh, get them out of there, get them out of there. Mm, look at now, that. It starts slow. Oh. But as it's doing this, it's building up heat. And oh. as the acid gets hotter and hotter and hotter, the, the reaction takes off. Oh, my. And all of a sudden, your panels are just dissolving, and mm -hmm. you got to get them out of here. And then the next batch you put in here, they just start dissolving immediately because your your acid's all heated up oh. from the previous reaction. Look Holy at that. Holy cow. It's just going for it now. And so at this point, you really have to be ready to move fast. And here again, this is why it's easier to do it and just even just one at a time. Right is much better because then you get a much much more control over the final result if you're just doing them one at a time right and then pull them out and i'm dipping that one in the water just to see what i've got and then look what happens when you hit the soda oh, look at that reaction Woo. it just it just you know acid and soda mm -hmm. <laughs> it stops the reaction immediately but yes. it does its own reaction it does and it adds this black uh, color to the oxide which you may or may not want um, a lot of this I took back off with a with a toothbrush. We'll see that as we go along. And then into the water. Mm. And then once I had them looking pretty much the way I wanted, then I just left them in the water. I see. Because I didn't want them reacting with the air. I, I see. You know, okay. I, I wanted, so I just left them in the water. Okay. And that'll keep them from oxidizing oh, further. Oh, look at that But one. look at that. Isn't that oh, neat? My. The way the, the ends of the panels now are all just and oh, holes are eating through it's wow. going all the way through and, and man look how much the reaction just it just bubbles and you do not want to breathe those fumes no no it just hits That's, the face mask and being outside is the big mm -hmm. key and then the face mask and the goggles and everything look at that when you can see fumes that's, yeah that's that metal now is just dissolving as it touches the acid the more of these you do the more they dissolve. I see. Look at that. That is wild. It's just eating the whole bottom of that thing away. Mm, but isn't that neat looking? Really cool. <laughs> now this is also leaving uh, that kind of crusty material on there. Mm -hmm. Some of that's coming from the soda. Some of that's coming from the acid. And sometimes I want that on there, and then sometimes I'll knock that off with a toothbrush. It just right. depends. Some depends kind of on the look. Or something. The wow. look that you want. But look at that. Oh, how, that's just and here again, that yeah. all happened in a matter of seconds. And yeah. that's why at this point, it's it's so much better to just do these one at one a time. One at a time, I can And see. slowly so that you can go, okay, this one's ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one's done. Yeah. And uh, rather than, than doing what I'm doing here, which is really mass production. Mass <laughs> production and rushing through them. Now, I'm using tweezers here because I don't want to put even my rubber-gloved hand in this no, stuff. Oh, you'll lose a finger. But look what it's doing to the tweezers. Yeah, uh, no kidding. I should have used plastic tweezers. <laughs> Something like that. They cleaned up okay. I took a little steel wool to them. They're fine. Right. But uh, the more of these you do, too, the more of this crusty material builds up in your acid. And then that crusty material forms even more crusty material on your panels. Oh, really? So each really? panel that you do really becomes a very unique individual thing. The earlier ones take on a certain look. The later ones take on a certain look. Um, here again, that's the advantage of doing these one or two at a time instead right. of in batches like I'm doing <laughs> here. Okay, I think we're ready to get them out of the water now. Again, I've been keeping them just in the water here at the table in order to, to prevent them from drying out because that crusty stuff will dry on there really hard. Mm. And then they also react with the air. Oh, really? Yeah, so I wanted to keep them wet and I want to continue to keep them wet until I get some of this material cleaned off and then slowly let them dry out. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is get them out of the dirty water out here and take them inside the garage mahal and wash them off with some some nice fresh water to get this uh, this crusty stuff off of here. Yes. So I'll give them a nice thorough bath in the sink in there. Once they're they're out of that dirty water, they're pretty easy to handle. You don't need rubber gloves anymore. There's nothing toxic going on here, but I gave them a nice thorough bath uh -huh. to make sure that all of the toxic chemicals and and soda and anything else. But there is a lot of that that crunchy material just sort of stuck to them. Right. And now I need to decide how much of that crusty material I want to leave on there. Right. And how much of that material I want to clean off. So I'll just lay them all out for drying and see just what the heck it is I've got here. Now the best thing to do at this point as they're drying out is always make way more than you need. Right. And then just pick out the ones that work and, and then save the other ones and just kind of grade them as you go along saying, okay, this is something I want to use to patch the fence. This is probably something that I'm going to use in the future. This might make a good roof panel somewhere mm -hmm. else. But just kind of go through them and say, okay, this one turned out fine. And, and this one turned out not exactly the way I anticipated. But look at the, the dissolved edge on that That now. is just wild. Doesn't that look like something that's been stuck in the dirt for it decades? It does. And then also, because it's so paper thin down there, just handling them, you'll start to break and bend the panels. Right, I imagine you'd have to be careful anyway. It could but be sharp. Look at that, how, how it's all curled over. Oh, yeah. But isn't that exactly what oh, you'd exactly, expect? Exactly, yes, especially if the wind got a hold of that, if it was on a roof. Yeah, so I, I'm not bothered by that. That's, that's part of the look right, right there, is having exactly. the corners. And now I want to get rid of some of that that crunchy material. So in some places I want to leave it, mm -hmm. in other places I want to clean it off. Again, uh, keep in mind that I might I might be preparing some of these just to stick in a drawer somewhere for a future project, others that are looking great to use here on the fence. Right. Uh, just, just kind of thinking my way through it. But as I use the toothbrush, some of them I really clean right down to the metal, and then others I leave a lot of that that goopy stuff on there. Oh yeah. And now the magic happens. Mm -hmm. As they sit here, they interact with the air. Oh really? And they dry. Oh my gosh. And the rust comes out. Isn't that weird? And so some of them will turn bright rusty color, some of them will stay sort of black. Look how neat the broken and bent corners are. Oh, it almost looks like a building that's been on fire. Or yeah. Something. It's really <laughs> oxidized. So that may be something you want to save for a future project. Now, look at this one. I left all that crunchy material on there. Right. And so that would look great in a certain application, maybe not in another place. Right. So it just depends what you're after. So again, I just make up a whole variety of these things, and then at the end of the day, just pick out the ones. <laughs> you know, that look like fence patches. Right. And save the other ones for, for future reference. So at this point, I was sort of tempted to even dry brush a little color on here. Mm. Because a lot of these corrugated fences would have been painted. Right. And then oxidized and the paint would all be falling off and the rust coming through. So oh, look at that. That would be another look. In this case, what I'm doing, just as I put vegetable oil on the fence to give it a wet look at the bottom, I did that with some of these panels too, the ones that are gonna be stuck down in the dirt. So I just came back here with some of that same vegetable oil on a paintbrush and just sort of daubed that on there. Oh, look at the difference now. It just, it gives it a nice wet look down It there. sure does. And then uh, you can see I'm using double stick tape here mm -hmm. and I'm just kind of putting these in place to see if, if I like the look or not. And the reality is, as I build up this fence, I move these things all over. Mm -hmm. And with the double stick tape, you can kind of pull them off, stick them back on, use some more double stick tape in another place. But I changed it up all over the place, and I was able to do that because I was using this double stick tape. And then once I had the look the way I wanted it, I went ahead and glued them in place. <laughs> now this is just a first attempt. This is all just on there with double stick. 
and I decided I had way too many panels here. A few too many, yeah, the whole fence. <laughs> and all in one place. So there's no patches in, in a lot of the fence, this whole section of the fence. And I thought originally that that would be a neat look, like one whole section had been patched and nothing else actually had. But I decided to take most of these off and put them in other places. Now, this is this Woodland Scenics Briar Patch. And I used that to add weeds along the base of the fence. And I used some of those flowers and, and grass tufts that you made. Right. Uh, but this briar patch is really neat. The problem is it's super, super fragile. Right. And so, boy, you have to go easy. And then I decided to take some of these panels and just have them all sort of wrecked. Yeah, like they fell off. The wind blew them <laughs> off, and, and the, one of the railroad workers just kind of stacked them that up over happens. here. <laughs> you know? That really happened. And so I thought, that's that's the look I'm after right there. So there's the, there's the finished <laughs> metal panels patching the fence. Right. Now we're going to continue working on the fence. We have a lot more to do on it. Just, just a few little things. So you definitely want to follow along with that. So if you're not a subscriber, you can become a subscriber with the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday. Right. See you then. See you. Bye-bye. <laughs>